You know, I'm excited about the time in which I live. I wouldn't trade the time in which I live for any other time period that's ever been out there because I believe that we are living at that time when this generation will more than likely see the return of Jesus Christ to this earth. And I, I'd love to see that. Now, I know it's going to get bad before that happens, but I would like to be one of those who actually, I mean, think about being able to witness. I mean, how many people are going to be able to say they actually saw this? You know, the return of Jesus Christ to this earth. Man, that's going to be good. It's going to be fascinating. You know, God is on a time schedule. He's allotted man six working days. You know, six days shall you labor, but the seventh is a Sabbath. Well, the six days represent 6,000 years. And those 6,000 years for mankind to do his own thing, to try to figure out how to govern himself without God in his life, those 6,000 years are about up right now. And what we're entering into is that millennial rest, the return of Christ, the Sabbath rest of God the millennium, the kingdom of God on this earth. All right, let's take a look at Matthew 24 and verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, for they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Again, you know, Jesus said that he is going to return to this sin-sick earth. All right? Notice Matthew 24 and verse 31. And he shall send his angel with a great sound of a trumpet. There it is again, the meaning of the feast of trumpets. A great sound of the trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect, those who have been called from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Wherever they may be, wherever their graves are at, they're all going to be gathered at this time when Christ returns. His cabinet members. You know, there's a comedian, I can't think of his name, but he's always saying, you know, you can't fix stupid. And we all get a kick out of stuff like that. You know, we like to laugh about other people's stupidity, but rarely do we like to laugh at ourselves, although that is healthy to be able to laugh at yourself when you make mistakes. But, you know, I've done, I, truth of the matter is, I've done some stupid things in my life, and I still sometimes mess up and do stupid. I, I say, I can't believe I did that. You know, sin is stupid. It really, if no one's told you that, you need to be told that, that sin is just downright stupid. But this comedian is always going around saying, you know, you can't fix stupid. You know, if God can't fix stupid, then we're all going to go to hell. Yeah, you know, that, that'd be a good bumper sticker. If God can't fix stupid, we're all going to go to hell. But, you know, I believe God can fix stupid. Now, <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to get really bad before the return of Christ. And this is what Jesus said about right before his return to this earth. Uh, Mark 13 and verse 20. Mark 13 and verse 20. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he has chosen, he has shortened the days. In other words, what Jesus is saying is, is this. If I don't cut it short, that time period that I have allotted mankind to try to figure out how to make his life work, how to live life, how to govern himself without God, if I don't cut that 6,000 period short, there's not going to be any flesh saved alive. We're talking complete annihilation. Now, what I'm saying is, is this, that's downright stupid that we could come to this. I mean, I think about it. After all we've been given, we've been given this wonderful, beautiful world that God has created. We've been given our freedom to do or do not. As Yoda would say, do or do not. You know, and uh, we, everything God has given us, and we're going to come to a point, Jesus said, unless I return, there ain't going to be nothing left. You do know we have enough power to destroy about three worlds over some say seven worlds over. It doesn't matter, does it? There's enough chemical, biological, you know, nuclear power to destroy three worlds over. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's mind-boggling. But I'm saying that's downright stupid that we would come to that point. And what I'm saying is this. Thank God 
praise God that God has the ability to fix stupid. And that's what's really in your Bible. Is that really in the Bible? What you think is in the Bible is not.